We live in an age where we have such a strong online presence. We've got so many different platforms that allow us to share with one another. And with all that sharing, it's important to be mindful over the sort of information we're putting out there. Now, you might be a security conscious person who's savvy over the sort of information you're putting on the internet, but you could be unknowingly leaking personal and sensitive information into the wrong hands in the form of metadata. G'day, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. In today's video, we're going to look at metadata, what it is, how you can access it, how it can be used against you, and how you can protect yourself from leaking this information. Let's get started. Before I get started, I need to apologize about my voice. I was supposed to be on vacation today, but I had to cancel my flights last night because I tested positive for COVID. So here I am. What is metadata? By definition, metadata is a set of data that contains information about other data. That's pretty vague if you ask me. Essentially, metadata is information stored within a file that contains information about that file that could be from a range of things like the author, the editors, the viewers of that file, uh, what device they used, what platform or OS, and what application they used. And it can delve right down as deep as the serial number of the device that that file was created on, uh, the product ID of the OS or the application that they're using and who that application is registered to. It can contain other information such as the details of the settings you are using within that application to create that file. So I did a bit of a search on the internet looking for some questionable images of people bragging about things they shouldn't be bragging about. Now I did have to cut this search a little short because well, I don't want to end up on a feds watch list. So I managed to find this picture of a little nugget that someone put on a forum labeled what I'm smoking tonight. For the untrained eye, this is just an innocent little picture of a nugget with nothing really in the background to give away any information until you look at the metadata. So there's a couple of ways that you can view metadata on a file. First one is you can right click on that file you can choose properties and then you can click on details. Now that's going to give us some very basic information. It tells us when the file was created, tells us that they edited it in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. It tells us the resolution, and it even gives us information about the camera they used to take this photo on. Next, we're gonna use a website to delve a little deeper into the metadata of this file. I'm gonna to go to metadatatogo.com, and I'm just gonna drag and drop my file into the website and click Start Analyzing File. This is gonna show us a lot more in-depth metadata, and it's gonna to start to paint a little bit of a picture about this image. Firstly, we can see, yes, they're using a Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. They used Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic 11.2 on a MacBook. We can see the time and date the file was created. We can see that they were using a Canon EF100 ISUSM lens. We can even see the serial number of the camera and the serial number of the lens that they were using. So if they've registered those with Canon, their information is out there. Now, I can also see that they originally transferred the file to their HP laptop. And we're starting to get a little bit more information about this person. I can see that they've got a lot of disposable income. They've got themselves a $2,500 MacBook. They've got themselves a $4,000 camera with a $1,500 lens and an $1,800 HP laptop. If I scroll down a little bit further, I can actually see the product IDs and the serial numbers of the laptops that they both used. The other thing I can see is they've got an expensive camera, but they have no idea how to use it. So they've got an aperture of 20 and they've got their ISO set to 160. Now that's a very dark setting for a very bright photo. To compensate for that, they set their exposure time to one over one. Now that's just stupid. To lighten up that photo, generally you would increase the ISO and you would definitely uh, drop that aperture down. So let's simulate those settings just so you can see how stupid this is. If I change my ISO to 20, they've got their shutter speed fairly low. Now, because I'm filming, I can't set it to one over one. And let's put that ISO down to 160. That image is almost unviewable. Now, to compensate for me not being able to get down to one over one, I'm gonna bump those ISO settings up too, and I'm gonna bump the aperture up too. You can still see that that's a very dark image. So if we go back to having a look at that image, we can see that that's a very bright image for those very dark settings, which tells me that they had this in a very well lit area. I'm gonna suggest that this is probably taken within their grow room, underneath their hydroponic lights, on the screen of their phone or their iPad, and that reflection we can see there of the white is more than likely the plastic they have lining their grow room. Now, if they were silly enough to have the geo tagging data on the image, we'd be able to pinpoint where that house is 
and SWAT busting in their front door is probably the last thing they'd be worried about. Now we're going to have a look at an image that I took on my smartphone when visiting the Gold Coast a couple of years ago. If I click on the three ellipses at the top, it brings up all the metadata about the photo, including all the lens settings. But if I click on go to maps, I can see exactly where I was in Google Maps when I took that photo. Now that's a scary piece of information, particularly if you're sharing photos with people online. We're going to get back to that in a minute. Now we're going to go to Peter McKinnon's website. Peter's a great mentor of mine when it comes to photography and videography. And if you don't know who he is, I suggest you go and find him on YouTube or on Instagram. I'll chuck some links down in the description. Definitely send him a follow and a subscribe. I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to save image as. Now, if I open this file in Photoshop, you can also go to file, file info, and I can bring up some very basic metadata. Now, depending on what's stored within the file is what's going to display in here. But I can see that he was using an RF 15 to 35 ISUSM lens. We can see the serial number of that and we can also see the model number. There's not a lot of other information stored here within Photoshop. So same again, we can go and drop that file into this website. We can start analyzing and same again, we can see a whole bunch of information about this photo. Now, if you are a photographer and you want to learn a little bit about how professional photographers edit their photos to make them look better, have a look at the metadata because you can see all of their Lightroom LUT settings that they've gone and used. Now you can see here, Peter McKinnon is a very advanced photographer and he goes and makes changes to just about every setting to do with an image just to, just to smooth it up and make it look that little bit more crisp. So if you do want to learn a little bit about that, you can pop the hood on a photo and you can get a little bit of an insight on what they're doing in the background. Now let's look at how you can protect yourself. So the main one that people are probably concerned about is that geotagging location. So go into your smart device, go into your camera settings and turn off map data or geotagging location. The setting name is going to change depending on which device you're using, but it'll be pretty obvious. Now let's look at how to strip out your metadata. So just like we used a website earlier before to view the metadata, you can use a website to go and edit and remove that metadata. However, there's something I didn't mention earlier when we went to this website was that all of these websites essentially can compile all of your metadata every time you upload a file. So if we have a look at their privacy policy, it clearly states that no, they don't process your information for personal gain. However, if the content in there outweighs your freedom and rights, they will use it against you. It also goes on to say that there are log files that note down your IP address and a whole bunch of information about your computer that you're using every time you upload a file. So if you are concerned about your metadata spilling out to the internet, although this is on a very low scale and an isolated uh, way, this is still going to put your information into unsuspecting hands. So I recommend using something like Exif tool. This is a command line tool. It is free, open source, and very simple to use with a little bit of Googling. You can buy GUI applications that will make this very easy. However, they're not cheap. So all I do is I copy Exif tool into the folder with my files that I want to edit, go into file and choose open PowerShell. This is going to bring up your command line. We can view the metadata by pressing full stop and backslash and then pressing tab until it says exif tool.exe. Press space and we can press tab again until we open the image that we want to view the data on. Pressing enter brings up all of that metadata that we saw before. Now, if I want to go and edit a particular line, you can use the exif tool and then type in whichever command it is equals and whatever data you want in there. If you want that data to be blank, leave it blank. If we want to strip out all the metadata, same again, full stop, backslash, press tab until it says exif tool. We're going to type minus all equals and leave it blank. And then we're going to press tab again until it brings up the name of that file. Press enter and bang, we've just cleared all that metadata and we can confirm that by running the view command again. We can see now that absolutely everything to do with that image has now been stripped out. We can safely go and upload our image to the internet and no one is going to gain any information about it. Now, there's obviously a lot more we could go into regarding this, but we want to keep this video short. So if you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or want to know any more detail, leave them in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.